the king of the Arameans was planning to attack the king of Israel. And in the process of planning, the prophet Elisha had whatever you said in your bedroom, the prophet there in Israel had you. I can say fire. fire. You are also setting fire to your own problem. Say fire. fire. That fire is also going to your own challenge. Say fire. Psalm 23 Verse 1 And remember I'm going to anoint all of you today Amen. Just clap hands for Messiah yeah. You will see what God is going to do there Pom, say pom 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 Amen, just read I will summarize my message. I've got a lot to say, but summarize. Okay, read. Psalms chapter 23 from verse 1. Yes. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. To feed. To feed. To guide. To guide. To shield me. And to shield me. I shall not want. I shall not want. Did you hear that? The Lord is my shepherd. To feed me. To guide me. And you shield me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. When I was meditating about this again and again, the Lord came and visited me more and more. He said, Why David came to this area of saying, The Lord is my shepherd? Who feed me? Who guide me and shield me? Why David has to pray or utter such? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. As a Christian, you need to come to this level where you can speak that the Lord is my shepherd. He is the one who feed me. He is the one who guide me. He is my shield. Why do you say he feeds you? When it is during the fame mine, it is dry, you are in the wilderness. The Lord, who is your shepherd, will feed you. He will feed you. He will feed you. Where it is impossible. When things are happening, he will come and guide you. He will be your shield. To protect you from every arrow of the enemy. Every terror by night, he will shield you. Protect you. And you shall not want. So in the absence of the shepherd, who is feeding you? Who is guiding you? Who is shielding you? In the absence of the shepherd, your life is at risk. You can be devoured any day of the day. You can be devoured at any time. Because there is no shepherd. There is no shepherd. What is the duty of a shepherd? To guide, to protect. And to when you have everything around you, it is not because of your mighty or your power. The Lord is your shepherd. He is the one who is feeding you. It is not your company. It is not your parents. It is not your husband or your wife who is feeding you. But your shepherd is feeding you. Maybe when they come to that area, they think that because I'm married to such, I, I, I'm staying in such. I'm being fed by my husband. I'm being, I'm being cheated by my husband, by my policies, by whatever. But we, without you can be devoured. You can be devoured. No one can feed you. No one can guide you. 
And you will be in want. Every time you will be in want, you will be discontent. You will never reach a level of satisfaction in the absence of the shepherd. Read going down. Verse 2. He lets me lie down. He lets me lie down. In green pasture. In green pasture. He lets me besides. Eh? He lets me beside. He lets me beside. The still the and still white, the waters. white waters. If you go and read Revelation 7, verse 17, you will hear that the cord or the lamp who has made himself in the center of the throne, he will be their shepherd. He will guide them to the spring of water and he will wipe away their tears. There will be no more mourning, gushing of teeth. There will be no more death. There will be no more pain. He will remove the tears from their eyes because he is their shepherd. He will guide them to the springs of water when it is dry during COVID-19 2020, the toughest year he will lead them to the springs of water he will cast out the streams of water in the wilderness and he will feed them some will be crying things are tough but he said, I will let you to lie down to green pasture. What is green pasture? Something beyond that a human being can discover. I repeat, what is a green pasture? Green pasture. Something beyond what a human being can be able to discover. When everyone sees the grass covering the land, you see food. When everyone sees flowers covering the land, you see food. Only the things that can be have discovered by someone who is in the spirit. Something beyond the human imagination. Something beyond your naked eyes is green pasture. Then basically, when everyone says there is nothing there, you see food. You see plenty of food. But people around you, they will say, ah, that one, that house is empty, there is nothing. But when you look, you see everything around you. Green pasture, he lets you down. Green pasture. When everyone says, this one is the end of him. You see food, you see everything. He offer, he feed. And he will lead you to the quiet. You know, to lie down to the quiet. And, 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 and this what do you call this water quiet water still water that is to enter God rest when you are laid down there when you are there you have entered God rest when everyone is panicking about COVID-19 you are resting you are resting you have no fear when they show you the stats of how many people died, you have rested in quiet water, in still water. You only hear one voice. Even when the birds cry around, you hear God speak. When you hear the rushing of the water coming down, you hear the voice of God to say, My son, be encouraged. Do not let your heart be troubled. I am with you. You have, been, you have entered God's rest. Still and quiet water. When peace is found, just read. This three. He refreshes. He refreshes my soul. And restores my soul. And restore my soul. He lets me in the path of righteousness. Yeah, he led me to the path of righteousness. For his, name's For his sake. own name's sake. Which means if you have been led to righteousness, it is not for your own sake, but it is for his name's sake. Amen. Amen. Peter, preach your revenge. That's why they say that 
must make sure that your righteousness is He leads you to righteousness. Not for your own sake, but his own namesake. Baba Mwebana or Haba Purusitwe for the righteousness they are doing for us. Once they are born again. Or for themselves. It is for his no namesake. And you give all in Allah. You are living for his purpose, not your own purpose. That is why you need to die for yourself. That is why you need to live the life beyond below your standard of the standard of your Because that is not your life, it's the life to glorify the Father. And with message, just read. Even though I go, listen to this. Through the I love this part. Even when I walk, through the sun, even when I walk, even when I walk, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the realm of the death. I fear no evil. Listen, the valley which is dark. What do you find in the valley? You find all dangerous wild beasts. You can find the snake, you can find the lions, you can find anything. Even the rocks will fall to devour some other animals on the valley. But you that are here, you that says the Lord is my shepherd, you continue to walk in the valley of the shadow of death and you fear no evil. Which means even when you walk, you met with witches and wizards, you have no fear. Even when you walk, you come across the devil worshippers, you have no fear. Even when you walk, you come across some you have no fear. Because the Lord is your shepherd. Yeah. I wanted to understand why David came to this level. And I could see that this man was highly, 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 highly anointed, and it was revealed to him that once you take the Lord as your shepherd, nothing can touch you. I came to understand the mission of this church when I said, I am untouchable. I am untouchable. And and Unstoppable, unwishable. Why I came to that area? The Lord is my shepherd. Where is your shepherd to be? Is your mother, your father a shepherd? Is your husband, your wife a shepherd? If you are still relying on them today, change. Make the Lord as your shepherd. Because your husband can take leave you. Your parents can leave you, but as for the Lord, will remain and be with you all days of your life. He shall never leave you nor forsake you. He is your shepherd. You shall not want. I learned something. Even when I walk, which means you're not standing one place. You're walking. You're witnessing the danger. You are meeting with witches and wizards along the way. You are meeting the wild beast along the way. But you keep on walking. You keep on walking. You keep on walking. You keep on walking. And you are not focusing on those things. Because you know the second that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fear. But now, if the Lord is not your shepherd, when you met with the witches and the wizards, your focus has been taken. You are captured in the devoir. When you meet with the dangerous animal, your focus is taken, captured. You are devoid. Daniel knew the second. When they put him in the lion death, he said, my, The Lord is my shepherd. I'm going to the lion dead with my shepherd. This lion, the mouth will be shut. They cannot kill me. When he was walking inside the lion dead, the lion said, Welcome, Daniel. We know you, we are calling you. We know you, you are the friends because the Lord is your shepherd. And the mouth of the lion was closed. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, when they took them into the 
fire. The fire was strange because the Lord was the shepherd. The first man appeared inside the fire. Then he began to walk with him. Even the signal of the hair were not in bed. And they said, He is our shepherd. What is terrifying you today? If he is your shepherd, if he can feed you, if he can shepherd you, if he can shield you, if he can cut you, I want to encourage you today. Continue to walk. Don't stop because if you stop, you are stopping your journey to reach your destiny. Continue to walk. Continue to walk. When you meet the snake in the valley, he said, How are you, snake? You pass, you continue to walk. When you met with the lion, you say, How are you, lion? You continue to walk. When you met with a bear, you continue to walk. You do not lose your focus. The moment you lose the focus, you will be a shepherd. Who is a shepherd? Have you ever seen yourself in the village? You are down there. The rocks are falling. Big rocks are falling coming down. But you said, I cannot look at the rocks. You continue to walk. They are missing you as you walk. The arrows are missing you as you walk. All the arrows of evil are missing you as you walk. Because you know that the Lord is your shepherd. Listen, if you stop to walk in your valley, every one of us here, at some stage, we had valleys. We must have valley. We must go through the valley and that valley. But it is not the end of it. But do not walk. Even if it is dark, the light is coming. The light is working with you. Continue to walk. The failure of the real of death. How about let me continue to walk. This is my friend. Let me continue to walk. You will see them passing by. You will see them dying, perishing next to you. But you continue to walk. You are in the realm of the death. What did Messiah say to Peter? Upon this rock, I will build my church. Case of hate cannot prevail. Whatever plan of the evil cannot prevent. Every weapon found against you shall not prosper. That is when you are with the shepherd. The Lord is your shepherd. That is why that devil worship when he was here, I said to him, try to kill me. I'm with you, we are two, we are not in the church. He said, how can I kill something which is dead? How can I take your spirit because you do not have a spirit that can only see fire? The Lord is my shepherd. You, if you reach that level of maturity as a Christian, you don't need to be prayed for. You don't need to be imparted. You just know that the Lord is my shepherd. That is why I always said, no man qualified to lay hands on me. Except my father, no one qualified to lay hands in me. I have reached the maturity level where I know that every time, everywhere I go, the Lord is my shepherd. Every arrow of the evil said to me, the Lord is my shepherd. He will guide me. He will protect me. I don't need bodyguard. I don't need bodyguard. I with me, church. You are a Christian, a mature, full of the word. I want you from today, you said, even when I walk through the veil of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. Because his Lord confronts me with his stuff. 
of the magicians. Hey, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. What he become the road to console you, to confront you, you must not fear even magicians. Yes, they can come in too and cast whatever they want to cast before you, but if they are casting it before the presence of God, what matters is they are casting in the presence of God. Your rod, your staff, will swallow their evil report. Have you ever had conversation with the witches? I always used to tell my wife that I went home in the spirit and I, I, I enter this, this, this house and I find witches having a big fire but they are naked and I will go and enter. I can tell you how the witch looked like, but I never see him during the day. But I attend the meetings. I enter and I said, Mama, I was home to this house. And I saw this and this, these are witches. They were painted. You know, they have got a big pot. They were boiling water. A lot of mooties in their faces. They were shining, but I entered. I entered. Enter. Confusion started to all of them. Have you ever have a converse with the? I'm telling you what I know. What I have done. Have you ever had a converse with the witch? Not now. Not in the dream. Not in the vision. Physical. And you said you are a witch. But I cannot kill you. I want you to receive Jesus. And the witch says, yes, I am a witch. Help me, man of God. Yes, I know how to witch, but I do not know how to take it out. You said, if it was not me, they were going to kill you. But now, because it is me, receive Jesus. Are you learning something? If the Lord is your shepherd, you fear no evil. The highest wish in your village, you can, can decide to meet him spiritually or physically. Said Mama Watakat. Mama Watakat. I think you are Takat. What take the hammer in the name and black them. That is not what Jesus Christ is looking for or expecting from you. You do not qualify to meet them because you will kill them. Because you are not yet matured. But if you are matured, he will permit you to meet them. I learned something. Even when I walk through the value of the shadow of death, in the realm of the dead, I fear no evil. At your people will be. What kill people cannot kill you. What seems to be poison, it is not poison to you. But continue to walk. I want to encourage you, continue to walk. There is a light ahead of you. Your destination is just close to you. Continue to walk. Because if you stop, you will credit your enemy. And you will have fear of the evil. Read, my daughter. Are you blessed? Are you walking? Or are you stuck like a water? Are you walking? Read, my daughter. I walk. Even though I walk through the sunless sunless, valley, that is a dark valley. Valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. We Have you ever been in your family? Everyone is dying left and right, but you continue to walk. They said your cousin is normal. 
your brother is no more. Your aunt is no more because of this and this. And you find that what has killed them, you have it, but you are walking. You are walking. And in your heart, you are meditating. My, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall I will continue to walk. Even if I say, my soul can't fail. I will never attend because they even know that you attend all these funerals because you are alive. Because you are a pillar. Some you even bury them. Because you have no fear that the next month will not tell you. You have no, you have, you haven't, you don't have such thoughts in you that it is me next month or next year. Because you are working. And your footsteps are being guided by the Lord. Your feet not to strike against the stone. He will lift you up. Great. I fear no evil. Uh -huh. For you are with me. Because what? You are with me. Your rod. Your rod. To protect. To protect. And your staff. And your staff. To guide. To guide. Just clap it for me, sir. If David utter such in the Old Testament, what about you in the New Testament? When now Jesus lives in you, if this thing was revealed to David in the Old Testament, what about you now? In the last days, when Messiah is living inside of you. You carry the returning spirit from him. Which means you are even above David. You are highly favored more than David. Just read. Verse 5. Uh -huh. You prepare a table before me. Listen. In the presence of my enemies. Listen. Now, you? those who are not listening, I want you to listen here. I want you to listen here. Read. You prepare a table before Master, me. Master, Master, Jesus. You prepare the table. You prepare the table before me. Where? In the presence of my enemies. Listen now. You have anointed. Uh, uh, wait, wait. That part is dangerous. Don't touch it. Let me start by the preparation of the table. Because beside the preparation of the table, there is no anointing. Listen. He said, you prepare before me the table. In the presence of my enemy. Yes, there is no preparation of the table without the presence of your enemy. Unless that is not what the master has prepared. If the master prepared the table, it must be in the presence of your enemy. So, which means you do not have to pray for your enemy to die. You do not have to pray for all your enemy, your adversary to perish. Allow the master to prepare the table in the presence of your enemy. So that they can witness your call. He will magnify you in their presence. Where there is no enemy, there is no preparation of the table. Most and which means that you cannot dine. You cannot dine with whom? Which means the preparation of the table. It is not prepared for your friends. It is not prepared for your mother and your father. It is not prepared for your relative. It is prepared for your enemy. Invite them. Eat with them. Eat with them. Jesus, before the Passover, he prepared the table. He put the bread and the and the blood. And the devil came because Jesus knew. And in the preparation, in the table, the devil will come to set the heart and weigh the motive of the heart. The devil came and said, Let me say, Peter, 
you will deny Jesus. Thomas, you've got a doubting spirit. Judas, you love money. Go and finish. But it happened in the temple. If you went go to expose your enemies, allow the master to prepare the table. My son always said, we will finish you in the temple. Prophet Elijah will always, and many people, they don't hear that. He said, we will finish you in the temple because the master has prepared. When we are busy dining, the Lord, the Spirit, entering you, is searching the motive of the heart. He said, Judas, go and finish what you have started. But now, if the preparation is not there, how will you know you are enemy? And if you kill all your enemy, who's going to die with you? If you go to the Old Testament during the time of Elijah, Elijah, you'll hear. I think that is Second Kings again, chapter, chapter, chapter 6. If you read from verse 22, you'll hear that after the king of Aram prepared to destroy the king of Israel. After he, he discovered that the king of Israel know that our plan are known. He sent the army, chariots and horses by the night to surround the camp, the camp of Elisha. In the morning when the servant of Elisha Gehazi woke up, he saw the multitudes of armies surrounding them. He went back to the father, Elisha. He said, my father, the whole camp has been surrounded by those people, they are going to kill us. Elisha looked at Gehazi and he, he said, you are not yet matured. You do not know your God. He prayed to God and said, Father, open the eyes of my servant so that he can see that those that are with us, they are more than those that are against us. The word of God reveals that immediately the eyes of Gehazi opened. But guess what? When the eyes opened, Elijah was not with him there. Elijah was on the mountain. Elijah was surrounded by the multitudes of armies, chariots and horses. And Gehazi was on the ground to show that they were in, not in the same position in the spirit. But the point that I want to emphasize the man of God prophet, he said, these people, let me speak to my Lord to blind them. He said, Lord, blind them. And the Lord blinded them. He led them to Samaria. When they entered the city, the Lord opened their eyes. When their eyes were opened, they found that they are inside Samaria and they were surrounded by the Israelites and the king. But listen now, why the temple must be prepared before your enemy. The king of Israel says to Elijah, my father, my father, what can I do to these people? They are here. Can I kill them? Listen to the father spirit. He said, do not kill them. Do not kill them. King, do not kill them. Because the temple has been prepared in their presence. Do not kill them. But do what? Do what? Just prepare the table. Put the bread and the drinks and feed them. Do not kill them. Who's going to dine with you? Feed them. They must eat. They must drink. Do not eat them. After they eat, send them to their king. Send them back to their king. If you find the witch in your yard, if you find your enemy in the preparation of the table, prepare the table for them to eat. Because the master has already started. 
feed them with the cream and the bread. After they eat, you send them back. Remember, in the family, you will find five which, but one will be sent or two. But those that have sent, they are waiting for the feedback. Yeah. <laughs> they are waiting for feedback to say, how did it go? So now feed the one who has been sent with the bread and the drink. After they are fed, he said, go back and tell them that that man, he even fed me. But if you keep no feedback, your God will not be known. And that will not be the preparation of the table by the mass. But if you feed them after they drink, after they ate, and I know for I remained, they have sent you. Go and give them feedback. So Elisha was teaching the king that if the temple has been prepared by the master, do not fight this battle. He will fight for you. But without the preparation, there is no testimony. And there is no enemy. But in the preparation, one must go through pain, one must go through challenge, one must go through problems. But you must see the preparation of the temple. When you, you, you feel pain, the Lord says, I'm preparing you. Your enemy must come and eat for you through that day. And you won't die. Even if you can pray to die, you cannot die. Because you are being prepared by the master. Huh? I learned something. I learned something. The temple needs to be prepared. In the presence of your enemy. But if you pray that I don't want my enemy to live, let me refer you to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 9. He said, You love righteousness, upright, you love purity and holiness, you, you love what is good. But you hated the loneliness. You hate the sin, the wicked. You hate unrighteousness. You hate the injustice. But listen, your God has anointed you with oil of gladness above your companion. That is why now you can come to the point of anointing. He needs to anoint you for you. You need to anoint your head for the cup to overflow. Why? That cup cannot overflow if the anointing is not of gladness, jubilation above your adversary. It cannot overflow without the adversary. And why it has to overflow? For that adversary to eat and drink in your table. Are you with me, church? Are you with me, church? He loved righteousness, upright, holiness, purity, and he hated loneliness and justice. He hated evil sin. Therefore, he anointed my head with oil of gladness, jubilation, rejoice, peace. Above my adversary. So now, even if you are seated with your enemy, you are not at the same level. You are above him. Even if the table is the same size and the chairs are the same size, you are above your adversary. Because of what? Jubilation, gladness, peace. You are above them. They are looking at you. But how did he make it? He was supposed to kill us. 
Now he's feeding us. They will fear your God. They will follow your God. They will magnify your God. But if you kill them, you finish all the enemy. You finish the temple. No more preparation. No. No more preparation. And listen. This is what the Lord told me. In the temple, in the temple, after it has been prepared, there are so many different kinds of food on the table. Meat, steak, chicken, soft food. He said to me, do not rush to eat the solid food. Eat the soft one until you become matured. When you are matured, I will promote you to eat the solid food. But allow your enemy to eat everything. That is why we have dessert. You, who has, in, who has invited them to the table, you start with dessert. You are being prepared for maturity. You allow them to eat the steak and everything. You know, this one is going to be get full now. And the heart, the thoughts of the heart will be revealed soon. Anyway, when you keep the Lord provide, eating the dessert, listening, because if you get full, you will sleep. And your enemy will devour you in the same table now. So now start with the soft one. Dessert. Allow them to eat everything. When they are full, they begin to reveal the thoughts of their heart. You say, huh? Huh? Go and finish. Huh? When you hear, huh? Even though they even call the kids. The child will even reveal that they were there last night. We were here last night. The father of this house does not sleep. We found him ready. They are revealing their hearts. In the temple. Continue to walk. Feed him. And to those that the assignment is not completed, so go and finish what you have started. It's a promotion to you. Let's say for the example, Uma Kileka injection your HIV the last night. You said go and finish what you have started. Tamaya Otia injection your kids. You can tell them to go fetch. Tamaya Otia injection your PP. Tamaya Otia injection your sugar. Tamaya Otia injection your arthritis. You will find me in the temple. And they bring all the evil with in the temple. You say this is for HIV, this is for cancer, this is arthritis, this is what you feed them. You say go back and tell them that I took all your weapon. That is what I said to John here. I said to John. Because you fail to kill me, go and recruit more. I cannot kill him because if I kill him, I will miss the point. Who's gonna tell me the secret? You had another daughter today. If now, if now, Mudimu had the Nina Wogulaya, Hamar Kita Wogulaya, or Kia Wogulaya, would not tell a guy the period of life. When they reveal their hearts, it strengthens you, it encourages you to press more. That the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fear evil. I shall not want. Are you listening? Have you ever seen how God operates to the true servant of God? They are ruthless. But we don't get it. Researchers and tell us all these things, but we don't give up. Are you what? Because we understand that the Lord is our shepherd. 
even if you are you can tell you whatever they tell you, then you can even read them. To show that you are still a fish, not the I read something. Just go down. Ask your neighbor, are you learning something? is preparing the temple in the presence of my enemies in the presence of my enemy you have anointed now the anointing is coming you have anointed and refreshed my head and refreshed my head with oil with oil of gladness my jubilation above my companion and anointing does not start on the hands. Anointing does not start in your feet. It must start on your head to overflow. And cover the whole parts of your body. But someone, after laying the hands, a demon manifests, you said, I'm anointed. Are you anointed? Are you anointed above your companion? The demon will tell you that I know Paul, I know Jesus. Who are you? Because there is no anointing in your head. You are not refreshed. There was no preparation. So when you are being anointed, you will, you will be squeezed. You will feel pain. You will be pissed. You will feel pain. And after the pain, the body died. The oil started to overflow from the head to the body. You understand that now the feeling of God is in me. The anointing of God is in me. But without pain, without paying the price, you might be anointed the legs or the feet or the hands. But you are not anointed from the head. Therefore, when Goliath comes, he will run to the head. Instead of you, as David, running to the head and kill the head, because the master is the head. So God start with the head. When when Prophet Samuel wanted to anoint Saul, he said, "Allow everybody to go ahead and remain." And the Saul kneeled down. And he took the horn of oil and anointed some. When he was anointing David, all the brothers passed before him. He waited for the right one, the one that God has chosen. And he anointed him. But David never said, Even thou have been told that I am a king. Let me, let me, let me start behaving like a king now and, you know, and take all the power to myself. He remained the shepherd until the appointment He remained a shepherd until the appointment Let me go back again to the point of allowing your enemy to be with you in the same temple. This Saul was looking for the life of David. One day he was chasing David. David ran to the mountain to the cliff. And Saul was after him. Chasing him. Chasing him. And the nature called him. He wanted to relieve himself. He went where David was. Listen, he went where David was. When he was busy relieving himself. Those people that were with David, they said, David, the Lord has handed over your enemy to your head today. Kill! And David understood the same and he said, hey, the preparation for me to run to the caves, the preparation for me to run to the mountains, it has already happened. I cannot kill him that what God has provided is my enemy. He said, Brother Saul, these people, they said I must kill you. I can see Paul, I can see Saul, still holding the trouser. <laughs> hey. 
David is is brushing him. Huh? Just look at Saul, the king. It is David, my enemy. I want to kill him. He said, Saul, these people said I must kill you. But because I know my God, I spare your life. Saul repented and said, How can I kill this man? He had all the opportunity to kill me. But he never killed me. But listen to the surrounding people that were with David. They said, The Lord has heaven over your enemy. Kill him. He said, I cannot kill him. Running to the cave is my preparation. Remember, I'm a king of Israel. I must run. I must walk. Saul, follow me. Because you're my enemy. So when your enemy is following you, do you understand that you're a king? When your enemy, when your, your accompany said king, are you not going to kill? Because they will tell you, kill, kill him. Say, no, I understand I'm a future king. Already I'm anointed. Sound repented. I want your enemy to repent from today. After they've been handed over to you, you just press them and say, There is the key table, let's go there and eat. There is fullness of Christ there. You can drink, you can eat. And even if there is a leftover, do not leave them with me, take them home. Take them home and eat with others. They will know your God. You will know your God. You need to go in there. Are you learning something? Are, are you blessed? Are you learning something? Change your prayer item. That I want my enemy to die all of them. I want my enemy to perish all of them. Who's gonna die with you? Who's gonna witness your prosperity? Who's gonna witness your success? Your prosperity and your success is not for your family alone. It is death for your enemy to repent and know your goal. Read my chapter. Verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy. Listen. Surely goodness and mercy. And unfaithful. And unfaithful, the loving kindness. Shall follow me. Shall follow me. All the days of all the days of my life. And I shall dwell. And forever. I shall dwell. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Throughout all my days. Throughout all my days. In the house. But listen now. And in the presence of the Lord. Listen now. You have the testimony. About the preparation, about dining with your enemy, about walking in the valley of the shadow of death, about the refreshing souls and the spirit. Now, goodness and mercy is following you and the loving kindness of the master. Do you stay in the house of God. And listen again. This goodness and the mercy and the loving kindness and falling love, does it remain with you forever? Does it follow you forever or it is only seasonal? There are people that are blessed this month, next month they are not blessed. There are people that are blessed this year, next year they are not blessed. Goodness and mercy and the loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. Which means you are not seasonally blessed. So now, but I'll put the chat to the chat. The mercy and the loving kindness does not remain in you in you seasonally. As to look at it, what if in 2020 during COVID 19, goodness and mercy and the loving kindness of the master was following you, has been following you when everyone was pain, when it was tough, when it was economic depression, when every company was retreating, goodness, mercy. And the loving kindness of the master was following you. You are still alive today. He is still feeding you today. He is still guiding you today. He is still shading you today. Therefore, you shall not want. And then you can sing like David. 
the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fear. I shall not want. Goodness and mercy in the loving kindness of the Master will always remain in me for the rest of my life. You testify this master. My prophet says, the same mouse that prophet, that testified, that same mouse is talking something else. <laughs> Which means you are not the matured. Whether it is tough, bad, challenges, sickness and disease, goodness, and amazing and the loving kindness of the master is with you forever. Amen. He is not only God because everything is fine. When the problem started in your marriage, there is no God. Goodness and mercy left. In Proverbs they say, when love flies out of the window, Eh, when poverty comes inside the house, love flies out of the window. Huh? Have you ever seen that love that flies out of the window because of poverty? It's the show that you are not matured. Your love is conditional. You wait, I love you. You pay me money, I love you. But if you don't have a job, there is no love. But as for the master, during the preparation, when the love flies out of the window of a human being, the love of the master is entering the house. So peace I give unto you. As, not as the world gives. Because my peace surpasses all peace. Remain single. I repeat. Remain single. If they left you, how do you follow something that has been contaminated? It will contaminate you and can even devour you. Who says that if you are single, you are not a best friend of Jesus? We never heard about the wife of Lazarus. We think you were single. But we hear of the sisters, not the wife. You can be single, but the best candidate of Christ. I will reach it. Say to yourself, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He feed me. He guide me. He is my shepherd. Formed against me that shall prosper. Therefore, I shall not want. When everyone sees grasses, I see food. When the land is covered by flowers, I see food. The fullness of the master is with me. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Let me shout to the master. to the master. Say the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ask your neighbor, Murtubari. Umotile. Who is shepherding you? It's not your mom. It's not your husband. It's not your brother. Say, I consider them rubbish. The Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. Did you hear the word of God? Are you blessed? You know, if you you can tap into the spirit and understand this, that is why I allowed Pastor Timothy to testify what God has revealed to him in a vision. 
things that are pressurizing you, discouraging you, they are rubbish. Allow the Lord to become your shepherd. I do not know what is to have money. I do not know what is not to have money. Neither I do not know to have plenty or nothing. I did not know how to well to be well fed or to have to be hungry. To me, it's the same. That is why I go to the mountain man. I go to the mountain month end when everybody is going to the mall. That is a sign that we are not content. There's too much in the world. Their shepherd is their money. Their shepherd is their husband. Too much in the world. But if you groom to the maturity, you can be able to declare the mystery among the matured. And you resolve to know nothing about everyone. About everything. Say, I resolve to know nothing about you. Point it to your neighbor. I resolve to know nothing about you. I'm seeing a soul in front of me. So if you want to bring about your money, you came to the wrong place. More money is rubbish. Last year is rubbish. Mm. That's what we have to make sure all pedestrians here. That's my prayer. All pedestrians here, you must bike her, all of you. Start to have license now. <laughs> to show that these things are rubbish. And the kingdom is called. <laughs> Shepherd, you buy the house today, you move on tomorrow. 
You buy the car today. You drive it now. Amen. 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 Did you call me from the garage to come and, and strengthen your car? That is a sign that he understood the Lord is my shepherd. But when there is no shepherd, as you heard me in my introduction, you must know that the spirit of Messiah is in your house. I know what is in your house. Whether there are wires, whether there are ropes, whether there is what watch, I know. And it's a sign that the Lord is not your shepherd. Are with me, Judge? So who complain of the Lord for the eight and eight? Who brought them? Who, who gave them the lift? Who can do it? Who can do it? Hey, because the Lord is a man, he and we. Who can do it? So can you say that person is saved? Hey, did you? Who can do it? I'm a man. What do you look at? Okay, I did you? I have to do Because it's for my daughter, you are covered. My daughter, like it in clear how. So when I can get trouble, but if you are in clear how, I sing good music again. If John Agaru to ask more Kerikeng, can John you are under arrest? And he immediately was here. What about the police? I take advantage of the authority of the master. I speak and God perform. Clap it for Jesus. Stand up on your feet. I want this table. Ashes, men, come. I want this table. Remove my pulpit here. Remove all this, this thing. I want only the keyboard players here and the drumist. And uh, maybe I will, when I'm done with the worshippers, you'll see how to position yourself here. Standing that side. I want to use my podium here to anoint everyone. Just give praise for the anointing of the Lord. So which means I'm anointing you and you are delivered, you are blessed. I'm not going to lay hands to anyone. Amen. If you are sick, when you come here, you are blessed, you are delivered, you are healed.